Hello there, hope you're all doing okay at home, those of you that are still at home. We're just going to have a look at another step of maths, continuing with our decimals. And this time today we're going to look at ordering and comparing our decimals. So again, like with our rounding, <clears throat> it's all about place value. So here's a little introduction. Can we think of a number larger and a number smaller than this decimal. So have a little look at what you've got there. Can you think of a number that's larger and a number that's smaller than this decimal? Just give you a couple of seconds to have a look and have a think. So first off, how I would approach this is we need to know what this number actually is. So what are these place value counters showing me? Here I have my decimal point and these are all in the columns that they should be in. So here I have ones and I've got two ones. Oops, sorry, should have clicked on the pen. There we go. <laughs> two ones. Then I've got my decimal point. In this column, remember this column is the tenths column. We can also write the tenths column as the fraction, tenths. How many tenths do we have? We have three. So 2.3. This one is the hundredths column. So we can actually write the column heading as our fraction or a small h. How many hundredths do we have? One, two, three, four. And then finally, can you remember what this column is? It is the thousandths column. There's the thousandths of a small t and a small h. How many thousandths do we have? Two. So the number the place value counter show me the number 2.342. Now the question was, think of a number larger and a number smaller than this decimal. So if we're going to make the number larger, what do we have to do? Well, we need to change one or two or all of these digits to become larger. So I'm gonna start with the two, I'm just gonna make that a three. So we could have three and leave it as that, 3.342. That would be larger than the number that we've got there because I have one extra one. Or I could have kept the two point and changed my three to a five and kept the other things the same. 2.542 would be larger because now instead of having three tenths in the tenths column, I would have five. We could have kept the 2.3 and changed the four in the hundredths column to a seven, for example. So don't overcomplicate things. If you're ever asked to do anything like this, think about it. How would you normally make a number larger? Well, you'd increase some of the parts to it. Maybe try and make it a little bit easier for yourself and just change one thing, unless it asks you to change more than one. So that's the same for the number smaller than this decimal. If I wanted to make this decimal number smaller, I could make that two into a one. I could even make it into a zero and automatically it would be smaller. If I wanted to keep the two point, then I could make one of these ones smaller. Instead of having three tenths in that column, I could take one away and have two tenths there. I could cross out two of these hundredths. I could cross out both of those thousandths. Okay, so you could have had various different answers there, as long as they were bigger or smaller than the number 2.342. Um, and place value is what's needed. So, Thinking about that then, here we have some rows of decimals. It says, tick the rows of decimals that are ordered correctly 
from smallest to largest. So what they're saying is they think that they've put all these decimals, this row and this row and this row, in order from smallest to largest. So we need to check that. If we look first, we're going to start from the left hand side this time and we're going to look at the ones column. And in each of these numbers, we have a one. So that doesn't help us. We then move across into the tenths column. Seven, seven, eight, and nine. So we have a seven in that one, a seven in that tenths column, an eight in that one, and a nine in that one. So far, they are in order. Let's have a look at the next column there. We've got to go across. 1.70. In this number here, we've got 1.71. Is 0 smaller than 1? Yes, it is. So this digit here in my hundredths column is smaller than that one. So 1.709 is smaller than 1.719. And 1.719 is smaller than 1.83 because we knew that from looking in the tenths column and 1.83 is smaller than 1.904 so that one is ordered correctly let's have a look at this next one start from the left hand side each of these has a three in its ones so that doesn't help me so far we look at the tenths column next I've got a four in this next number, I've got a 5. So, yep, 3.4 is smaller than 3.5. I've got another 5 here. So, yep, that would be okay so far. And then in this one, in the tenths column, I've got a 0. So, what does that tell you? Does it tell you they're in the right order? If I've got 3.4... 3.5, well we know that 0 is smaller than 4 or 5, so 0 tenths is going to have to be smaller than 3.4 or 3.5, so it's not in the right order. Let's have a look at the next one, start from the left hand side, the 1s, we've got a 6, a 6, a 6 and a 6. Okay, let's move on then. Look at our tenths. We've got a 0, a 5, a 6, a 7. They're all okay in the tenths column. They're all in order. 0 is smaller than 5 tenths. 5 tenths is smaller than 6 tenths. 6 tenths is smaller than 7 tenths. Yep, fine. So let's have a look in our hundredths column. Well, we don't really need to do that, actually, because we've made sure, just by looking in our tenths column, that they are now in the right order. And because we don't have any of the digits repeating, so we don't have another one, for example, that's got six tenths in it, we don't need to look at anything else. So we can just move on. And that one is correct. Let's have a look at another example of a question. These decimals have been placed in descending order. So think about that word, descending. What does that mean? It means to descend means to go down. Descend and down both begin with a D sound. Circle the decimal that completes the sequence. So this time we're going from highest to lowest. Okay, we're descending, we're going down. So, circle the decimal that completes the sequence. We've got 7.29, 7 and 6 tenths. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, it means 7 whole ones and 6 tenths. I'm just going to jot that down. 7.038, 7.165. So I've got to put it here. So I'm going to look at my numbers first, either side. Oops. So either side, I've got 7 point and 7 point. So that doesn't really help me. 
But let's have a look at the tenths. I've got 7.5 and I've got 7.2. So I need something in here that is 7 point and then I need a tenth that is in between 2 and 5. So could I have 7 and 6 tenths? No. Can't have that one. Could I have 7.038 if I'm going down from highest to lowest? 7.5, 7.0, 7 7.2. Nope. Could I have 7.165? Sorry, I don't know why it's doing that. Could I have 7.165? So I'll go 7.5, 7.1, 7 7.2. No. So that must mean that 7.29 is my correct answer. Which, although we've got the same amount of tenths as this one, the two, when we look in our hundredths column, we've got nine hundredths there, and we've got five hundredths there. So the answer is 7.29. And we worked that out by thinking and looking ma mainly at the tenths column and thinking what would go in between and saying that these ones definitely wouldn't. So we've done it by what we call process of elimination. We've thought about the ones that it can't be and we've luckily ended up with the right answer. Okay, you might have one of these questions where you have to complete the statement using the symbols greater than, less than, or equals to, to make it correct. So, what do you notice first of all? This is measurement. First of all, I notice that I've got centimetres and metres. So my first job is to convert the centimetres into metres. And to do that, the magic number is 100. And I have to divide by 100. So recap, to divide a number by 100, each digit moves two places to the right. So 852 centimetres in metres is 8 0.52. Now I've got a decimal, so that would make sense. So let's have a little look. I've got 8.52 meters and I've got 8.491 meters. So when I look in that tenths column, because my ones are the same, I've got eight ones in both numbers, but when I look in that tenths column, this five here is bigger than that four. So straight away, I can put that symbol. 8.52 metres is greater than 8.491 metres. I don't even have to look in my hundredths and thousandths column there. Completely ignored this one for now, but let's move on to this one. So now I need to look at 8.491 and 8.49. So I can see that they've both got the same ones. I can see that they've both got the same amount of tenths. So looking at the hundredths, I can also see that they've got the same amount of hundredths. But this one has the digit one in its thousandths column. What digit does this have in its thousandths column? What digit does 8.49 have in its thousandths column? Well, if there's nothing there, then it means it's a zero. So now when we look in our thousandths column, we've got a one here and we've got a zero there. So this must mean that it's greater than, okay? Because I have a one in the thousandths column in that number, and I don't have any thousandths here. So 8.491 is greater than 8.49. Okay. And finally, you may get an activity like this. Place the numbers in ascending order. So that's the opposite of to descend, which means to go down, 
So ascending means to go up. So we've got smallest to largest. Okay, what do you notice here? We've got mixed. We've got mixed numbers and we've also got decimals. What have we been looking at mainly? Decimals. So let's convert three and five hundred and sixty one thousandths into a decimal. So three point five six one. And three and a hundred and sixty five thousandths as a decimal. Three point one six five. OK, just give them a little scribble out. Confuse me otherwise. So now I have my decimals. I've got to put them in order from smallest to largest. So again, just to recap, start from the left hand side. They've each got a three in their ones column. So that doesn't help. Just crossing it out, which means that I need to look in my tenths column. I've got a five. I've got a five. I've got a six. I've got a one. So from there, I can clearly tell that this one is the smallest. I've only got one tenth there and the other ones I've got higher. Sorry, I don't know why it keeps on doing that. 3.165. So if we're still looking at the tenths, I've got a five, a five and a six in the tenths column. So this one is the larger one because I've got six tenths there, whereas in these two numbers that I've got left here, I've only got five tenths. So straight away, I can put in the largest number too, which leaves me with the other two numbers that have a five in their tenths column. So because we've both got the same amount of tenths, we now need to look at our hundredths column. We've got eight hundredths there, and we've got six hundredths here. So which one of these two numbers now is the smaller one? Well, it's this one here because I've only got six hundredths, whereas in the other number, I've got eight. So, excuse my handwriting. 3.561, and then finally 3.5. Eight, one. Obviously, they've written in the first two using their um, mixed numbers that they had in the original question. So, just to recap, when you're ordering or comparing decimals, always start from the left-hand side. And in this case, we only had ones first to look at. So, you look at the ones. If you've got the same amount of ones, then move into the tenths column. From there, you might be able to order numbers without having to look any further. But if you've got two numbers or three numbers even that have the same amount of tenths, you then have to look at those three numbers and look at their hundredths column. OK, until you've managed to figure out which one is smaller, which one is larger and vice versa. OK. So think very carefully, don't rush it. Have a good go at your sheet, please. Those are the activities that you'll see. Make sure you really think about it and good luck.